it's really hard to turn someone back from atheism towards Christianity at an adult level. But if you can catch people when they're young, as the questions are just forming and give them real answers, it can mean eternity to them. Uh, Josh McDowell Ministries had done a study at that time showing that if a, a youth is not saved by age 12, only 7 to 10 percent will get saved later on. And I, mm -hmm. I recognize that we need to go downstream in apologetics and catch people before the doubts uh, come in and give them good answers so that when they start talking to the science professors in college, they won't lose their faith. Hey there, it is Faith Talk today. I'm Rick Probst. Hope you're having a wonderful Atlanta weekend. I just met a guy, I guess it's been a few days now, and he's on the screen if you're watching. We're going to talk to him in a second. Tom Griffin is an apologist. He's an author, a speaker, a podcaster. He's a new staff member uh, here at Salem Media Group here in Atlanta, and we are so uh, happy to have him. But digging into this guy's brain, and he's got a brain, uh, I mean, a big one, way bigger than my brain. So that's why we're going to let him talk about a, 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 being a, an apologist and what that means and what he's talking about. He's got a passion for it. And this is interesting before we get into, as we talk about downloads on Faith Talk today, he's had a heart for some years to reach out to teens or tweens, tweens and teens, those that need to know, the is the Bible reliable? Is it a historical document as well? Is God real? And he approached that in podcast form and writing form and so many ways and has touched so many lives over the years. I find that fascinating and relieved that I don't have to do it, that somebody smarter than I and uh, has that calling is doing it. So we're going to dig into that in just a few. Tom Griffin, uh, hang on. Uh, uh, we'll get to him in just a second. Thank you so much for downloading the Faith Talk Today podcasts and watching us on YouTube. I know I don't have a mug, uh, an attractive mug to look at, but you're watching us anyway, and it's got to be our guests. So thank you very much, and thank you for listening to our podcasts we certainly enjoy bringing you folks. We like to wind them up and let them talk about what they want to talk about. And uh, you seem to enjoy it. Thank you very much for downloading our podcast. You can get your podcast wherever you get your podcast or go to faithtalkatlanta.com. Let me remind you, too, that we have an app at Faith Talk uh, Atlanta. You can listen to or uh, well, you can listen to Faith Talk today and go to our YouTube channel and watch us uh, uh, do the same thing. It's great stuff. All right. Let's get down to business because this guy has a lot to say and I want to hear it. And I know you do as well. Tom Griffin, new staff member here at Salem Media Group, our Atlanta crust, uh, uh, cluster. We're so happy to have him. He's an apologist. And that doesn't mean somebody who knows how to say I'm sorry. That's something a little bit deeper than that. An apologist, author, speaker and podcaster. Tom, welcome. Well, thank you very much, Rick. That's quite the introduction. And yeah, my brain is so big, it pushed all the roots of the hairs right off of my head. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a sense of humor. That's a good thing if he's going to hang with me. Tom, uh, being an apologist, uh, we found it fascinating, not only to, to talk to you about broadcasting and uh, connecting with churches and ministries, but what really got on our radar, what really made our antennas go up was you talking about uh, being an apologist and how that is so important. Uh, well, it has always been important, right? But it's really important in this day and with the passion that you have. Before we get into the particulars about the authenticity of the Bible and, you know, is it a historical, is it reliable and is is God real? How did you get into being an apologist? What, what drew you to this particular part of ministry? Yeah, there's uh, quite a story there. Um, I guess it's going to involve a little bit of my testimony and background, but you know, I think it's worth going into it because it shaped my my life. Um, I, I grew up in a Christian church and a Christian family, but I guess I would say it didn't take. Um, in most of my 
life, most of my adult life, I was a skeptic, probably what you'd call agnostic right now. Uh, I just wasn't sure that God existed. Uh, you know, I found church boring and, you know, <laughs> I'm a very rational, logical, analytical person. It just, you know, where's the evidence? That's what I kept saying to myself. When I was growing up, uh, whatever questions I had, they considered them doubts and that made me sort of shunned in church. And mm -hmm. I eventually just kind of walked away from that. But I remained like, OK, I'm open if somebody would ever show me any evidence. I'd never heard about any evidence for God or the Bible or Jesus. Um, nobody introduced that to me. So this went on for at least 40 years, four decades of my life. Wow. And so I was just, you know, following my own um, directions uh, with self-interest. And, you know, as it sometimes happened, God kind of broke me down. Um, I'll just say that I had an, a, a, a real experience with the Holy Spirit. And in a moment, I accepted God and I made a vow, which was this was I was age uh, 50 at the time. Uh, I became born again as a Christian, and I vowed that uh, because I ignored God for the first 50 years of my life, that I was going to spend, God willing, the next 50 years of my life serving him and serving others. Wow. That led me into, you know, uh, you know, a path that's been a very long path. Uh, initially, that had nothing to do with apologetics, but I always had these questions that remained in my mind. Um, I started uh, reading the Bible randomly, hoping that, you know, God would provide some messaging for me there. I started going to church. And then uh, one day I got an invitation to a conference at our church. And uh, it, basically they were going to cover things that you would, uh, questions that you would describe, like, how do we know God exists? How do we know the Bible's true? How do we know Jesus was God? Could other religions be true? And I was fascinated. I'm like, what, is there really information about that out there? And that was a phenomenal experience. And it led me into apologetics. That's what that's all about. Apologetics comes from the Greek word, lawyer's defense, apologia. Um, so it's often misunderstood. And some people are afraid of it because it's kind of the intellectual yeah. Uh, side of theology. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I started from that conference uh, that was held by um, doctors uh, Norman Geisler and Frank Turek, two of the, uh, the great ones in apologetics. Um, they signed the book for me. I read it two dozen times mm. and then I started reading other books. And eventually I thought, well, you know, I, I need to uh, formalize the study, and I pursued two degrees at seminary in religion and apologetics, and uh, then started writing and teaching. Uh, really, I started when my I was in fifth grade. I started teaching fifth graders. I had no intention of teaching apologetics, but the very first week, which you often start off the school year in Sunday school with the creation. Um, uh, lessons, people, the kids, 10 and 11 year olds started asking me questions like, you know, well, if God knew that Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were going to sin, why would he allow that? Uh, and, you know, did dinosaurs live in those days with people? And, you know, our, um, you know, last year, our teacher taught us that um, the earth was only six to 10,000 years old, but science says it's billions of years old. Well, what's the right answer? There was just unbelievable questions in my first week, which I recognized immediately as apologetics questions. And I decided, well, what about the people that aren't asking other questions? And from that day, I started writing and teaching apologetics for 10 and 11 year olds. And I recognized that um, at that time, um, most of the apologetics world was surrounding adults. Um, but my experience was, you know, adults usually already have their mind made up and it's too late. It's really hard to turn someone back from atheism towards Christianity at an adult level. But 
if you can catch people when they're young as the questions are just forming and give them real answers, it can mean eternity to them. Uh, Josh McDowell Ministries had done a study at that time showing that if a, a youth is not saved by age 12, only seven to 10 percent will get saved later on. And I, mm -hmm. I recognize that we need to go downstream in apologetics and catch people before the doubts uh, come in and give them good answers so that when they start talking to the science professors in college, they won't lose their faith. And unfortunately, there has been a problem for decades where approximately 70% of Christian youth exit the church by age 22 and they don't come back. Yep. So that got me all started and it just, you know, led me to where I am now. I've been teaching uh, for, you know, 18 years in the church, youth and adult groups. And then I, I wrote the material, self-published it. Uh, it's out there, as I said, in a thousand locations. And then because uh, I wanted something that wouldn't have a cost, I turned those into free podcasts. And, uh, you know, we, we, we have a pretty broad audience and I don't even do anything to promote it. I've got other organizations or referrals where people just, you know, refer them to the materials and they either buy them, the printed materials online at Amazon or Barnes and Noble, or they get the, uh, the podcast. So that led me to where I am now. And I had been looking for a more formalized ministry position for a long time. And it was just a godsend when I found Salem Media. Tom Griffin with us, apologist and apologetics. Uh, uh, I, I love, and now here's a guy that knows what he's talking about, right? But if you'll listen to the podcast, it's apologetics for tweens. I was listening this morning on Spotify. You can get the podcast wherever you get your podcast. And maybe this is the wrong term to use, but for us old folks, he kind of dumbs it down so that we can understand it. And I think that on that level, it's really had a lot of effect on, you know, he's doing it so long now, Tom, probably most of those kids that you started out with are adults and maybe they have, maybe they have kids. They've definitely gone through college, but I think this is something not just for tweens. I think it's something for all of us because we all need not only to, to have the data or the information, but we need to have that so that we can share that with others. If you'll go to resurgenceconsulting.com, you can find out more about Tom and, and get some of the, the resources that he talked about. But if you want the free stuff, absolutely check out the podcast. And, uh, you know, you'll do probably one of those, you'll go through two or three podcasts before you know it, because they're really short, they're really concise, and they're really powerful. So we wanted to introduce you to uh, Tom, because we think that what, that he, of course, is valuable, and what he has to say is valuable. I don't know that we're going to be able to, in this particular show, get to everything we want to. I think we should have him back. And we'll do that and we'll ask him specific questions, uh, maybe that have been on uh, uh, questions that have been on my heart, have been on your heart, or maybe folks that have asked you. I know my kids and now my kids are grown, but they have asked those questions specifically, Tom, that you that you brought up. And we want to.